Hello everybody, it's Gloria, Gigi the Crochet Queen, and welcome back to my channel. So it's been a minute since I've done a tutorial, and I've been working on craft cans. So that has taken up a lot of my time, but I've been learning a lot and enjoying what I've learned. So I just wanted to um, pass along a couple of things that I have learned doing graph GANs and one of them is as if you've ever done a graph GAN you know you are doing uh, changing colors and you have a lot of tails and you know in the end you're gonna have to end up having to um, sew in all of those tails so I've been learning from creative stitching diva Shanna um, how she um, weaves in her tails um, without, um, before, you know, getting to the end, unless you know you have something um, at the end. So I am just going to do a quick, um, just a half double crochets across. I just made a short chain. I didn't even count how many there were because um, I'm not, I'm just showing you one of the tricks of the trades that I've learned from Creative Stitch and Diva. And if you're interested in learning um, graph cans, if you don't know how to do it, um, she is a great resource person. Um, she has her own um, YouTube uh, channel, Creative Stitch and Diva. And she has a Facebook group, uh, Graph Can and the Restless. Um, she has a lot of information on there regarding graphs. And she has some beginner graphs that you can work on to um, perfect your skills. And she also makes graphs if you ever want one um, she can create it for you so i have learned a lot from her and hopefully it'll take me far in adding to my crochet skill so i'm at the end of this chain and i did all half double crochets across and one of the things that she showed was instead of having this one tail hanging like we all do usually when we crochet and we have a tail hanging you take that tail you pull it through your loop that's on there go back into your loop you want to pull that up some so that it's even with the side of that loop side of that um, stitch then you chain one and you continue on with your work so I am going to go across I'm going to crochet over that tail, do a few stitches, and make sure that it's in there. And you can see how nicely it looks on the end. So you don't have that tail hanging. So it looks, you don't even notice that there was a tail there. So when my quest to get better at uh, graph cans, <clears throat> I, she does a pop lock, uh, I'm saying, I know I'm saying it wrong, but she, does, she has a technique that she uses to lock in her um, yarn when she's changing colors. So, I am going to do a different technique that I saw. Um, it was Teach Me Graph Gan with Linda K of AZ Threads. And this was a video from like three years ago. But I like her technique because I have yet to get really good at um, Shauna's technique. And my stitches tend to be a little larger than I want them to be. So when I saw this technique, I really liked it. So 
with her technique, you are going to start your, and, I, and I've been using half double crochets on all of my um, graph cans. So I'm going to go in and do my, start my half double crochet and get a new yarn that I'm going to change. And I make a long tail, keep a long tail. And you pull it through. Then you take the tail of that new yarn and you want to make your next stitch and you use that tail as the part that you pull through first to make that first stitch. And she drops the tail back, but I crochet over the tail because I am trying to not have to sew a lot of tail ends when I am finished with my graph. So I really like that um, technique that Linda showed on her video. So as you can see, how nice and neat that looks. You don't have any hanging tail and you continue on. And let's say we want to change colors again. And again, I'm just gonna pull this over. This is not what you should do, but I'm just gonna pull it over. And you bring it, pull that through and you're starting on a new yarn. So you'll have that yarn in the back. The old yarn will be in the back. And you just keep going across. Although I have that little tail sticking out, I should have crocheted over that. But I am just showing you some, just a couple of the techniques that I have learned as I've been trying to get better at doing graph cans. So we're at the end, I'm gonna chain one turn and the yarn is in the back. All of it is in the back. Even when you turn, you wanna keep all of your tails on one side. So all your tails will remain on one side. So what I'm gonna do is do change yarn again, change color of yarn again. And we're gonna pull this one to the back and grab your new yarn, pull it over, pull it through. And you want, you can go under that to secure it even more. And then you wanna tug down on that and you keep going. And since I crossed over with this yarn, I'm going to pick it up and pick that up again because you want to hide this. You really don't want to cross over like that. But I was just showing you, basically trying, showing you the techniques of you know, not having to have a lot of tails. And you can just weave them in as you go and a good um, thing to remember when you're doing graph cans you really don't want to go over more than three stitches when you're covering up a yarn tail so if you have to do let's say five or six stitches on a new um, row of a different yarn color it is best that you just start with a new yarn instead of going through because you don't want your old yarn color to bleed into your new yarn color. Unless it's a color that's dark enough where you can cover up what you're doing. So I hope that you enjoyed that little tutorial on how to change colors and weave in. As you can see, I just missed a stitch there. <laughs> You can weave in um, your tail when you're changing your color. 
and weave in your initial tail when you first start your um, crochet work. So until the next video, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and comment on this. I love reading your comments. And until my next video, stay safe, keep crocheting. Bye-bye.